Everyone is strangely abuzz today. Is there a visiting minstrel or a mummer's troop? Haven't you heard, mister? A funny knight's been coming to town recently. A funny knight, hey? Oh, yeah, he's super strong. He can carry all the blacksmith stuff by himself. And he got those guys who kept picking fights at the tavern to finally shut up. But he's also kind of weird, too. Like when you talk to him, sometimes he seems sheltered and obtuse, but then sometimes not. Why does that sound like... No, it couldn't be. Yuri, what are you doing here? <sighs> I knew it. I'm glad I ran into you. We have a broken wagon that needs fixing, and I could use a hand. I can't believe you. Come with me a second. Are you an idiot? What are you doing here? Hmm? I had some time on my hands and thought I'd see how things are going in town. Then stick to the more upscale streets. This alley is dangerous. It's not quite a full-blown slum, but money is still in pretty short supply. What are we supposed to do if someone introduces our king to a nice pointy knife while he's out wandering the streets? By himself, might I add. How am I supposed to learn what it means to be a commoner without using my own eyes? All I ever see from my throne are the upscale streets, as you call them. And yes, I could send someone here in my stead, but there is no substitute for first-hand experience. You know you don't have an heir, right? <laughs> if you die, the entire region gets thrown into a bloody civil war over who gets to succeed you. Lots of nobles will die, but the commoners? The commoners will be absolutely slaughtered. Right now, people seem to like you, so it's in all of our interest that you live a long and healthy life. Got it? And if you insist on coming here, at least bring that giant oaf of yours along to watch your back. Hmm. Perhaps I was being a bit reckless. It's good to know that even a fool like you can see reason on occasion. In that case, might I ask you to act as my bodyguard today? I'm certain you're more than up to the task. What? If I could get a look at this town through your eyes, I think I could learn many valuable lessons. Besides, if I ask to do, he'll surely forbid me from coming here at all. I would be grateful if you would consent to doing this favor for me. <laughs> oh, oh, this is rich. A king asking me for help. <sighs> Fine. In that case, your majesty. I will do all in my power to safeguard your royal person. Happy? You seem to be staring at me, Yuri. What's wrong? Just thinking how odd it is that you've grown so accustomed to a town like this. Well, I like this place, and its people. There may be a few vagabonds in the darker alleys. That just shows how accepting everyone is. They all greet me with smiles, despite my being a complete stranger to them. Oh, they'd change their tune pretty quickly if they knew you were the king. Anyway, have you enjoyed your little tour of this garbage heap? Did you get a good look at the town through my eyes or whatever it is you wanted? Yes. And it's also got me thinking about how best to help those of more meager standing. Originally, I thought that establishing medical facilities or investing in the church were the best pathways to this cause. But after seeing the people here, I realized they are not indigents standing around with open hands awaiting salvation. I'd love to unpack your definition of indigent, but yes, they certainly don't take things lying down. Maybe it's idealistic, but I think regents should rule in a way that not just nobles, but everyone can see as reasonable. 
But to accomplish that, a ruler must take the opportunity to truly listen to the people. Of course, I can't go around visiting every burg and hamlet personally. I realize this. But I still feel this is the key to true reform. Well, good on you if you actually manage to accomplish that. But it isn't going to be easy. First, you have to give the poor a minimum level of education. Of course, they're already fully capable of telling you when they're hungry or if taxes are too high. But they'll need education to understand the policies and laws established by their lords and hold any kind of thoughtful opinion on them. Education, you say? Yes, that makes a great deal of sense. Problem is, people aren't in the mood to learn anything when they don't know where their next meal is coming from or where they'll sleep that night. Right. Improving quality of life is first and foremost. Education can be built upon that. Now, sadly, none of this will be cheap, and the current war is doing a fine job of draining our coffers. Which means I need to end it as soon as possible. So the main problem comes down to money, huh? In that case, why not make use of us? If you need funds, I can introduce you to a wealthy merchant or three. And if you need to get some dirty work done, I can lend you a few of my men. All we need in exchange is for you to provide us a little bit of support. I'll not permit you to work evil in my name. And besides which, tales of how you and your band have eaten lords out of house and home are legend. But you're a different matter entirely, Your Majesty. If we join forces, my dream is sure to be realized. I swear to never allow you to fall victim to any vile practices. You have my honest word on that. And what is this dream of yours? I'll tell you about it in due time. But for now, Your Majesty, do you accept my proposal? I will consider it. After spending time together, I've come to want to trust you. I promise it'll be the best decision you ever make. But until then, I'll patiently await your reply. Here you go, Kali. As promised. Hmm. This feels a little light. You run into trouble moving the merchandise? Eh, sure did. With all the fighting lately, even the noble folk are getting real selective about who they do business with. Well, nothing to be done for that. Our competitors certainly won't back down, so we can't afford to either. I'll think of something. Might involve crossing a dangerous bridge or three, but we'll work it out. I'm pretty sure... He went... Huh? Yuri? Well, if it isn't Ash, you seem out of breath. Am I really so charming? Did you see someone suspicious come this way? I was chasing them down, but I lost them. Ah, you must be referring to my lackey. Your lackey? Wait, what is that you're holding? Oh, just various proceeds from this and that. But I'll not say more. Especially not in front of a royal knight like you. Dirty money, is it? Coin is coin. Whatever grime it may bear always washes clean in the end. You know, I've been biting my tongue on this for a while. But I don't think it's right to earn money the way you do. You're so much smarter than me. You could do anything if you put your mind to it. There's no need to resort to cheating and hurting people to turn a profit. Are you seriously trying to lecture the Lord of the Underworld? Oh, that's adorable. No one makes it through this life with clean hands. You should know that better than anyone. Sometimes you have to resort to just the most terrible things imaginable in order to feed your family. Am I right? 
How do you know about my past? I've never told anyone. No, oh, I don't know. Perhaps I heard it from Count Roe. Or maybe even Lord Lenato. The sins we commit follow us until our dying day, my friend. I know that. But even so, I... Well, I'm a bit busy, so you work that out while I walk away. Bye then. Yuri. No, I won't turn my back on you. We lost him! Split up and search, boys! Don't let him get away! <laughs> they really are a persistent pack of scoundrels. <laughs> uh, someone shot me! Yuri, over here! Oh, I think we're good. They won't chase us this far. Looks like I was just in time. Are you hurt? So long as my face is fine, the rest of me doesn't matter. That's the real moneymaker, you know. And I appreciate the save, by the way. <sighs> you never change. Anyway, care to tell me why those thugs were after you? No, oh, just a little disagreement among businessmen. Happens all the time. This is exactly why I said you had to find a different way to make money. If you're going to lecture me, I'd prefer the arrow you gave my friend back there. Also, if you disagree with my methods, why save me in the first place? You could have left me to reap the consequences of my actions and had one less villain in the world. I'm not lecturing you because I think you're a villain. I have no right to call you evil anyway. I just don't want to see you endanger yourself. Sometimes the only way to get anything done is by putting yourself in harm's way. You should know. Or I suppose you wouldn't. What with your being an upstanding knight and all now. Trust me, I know. I can't forget the past no matter how hard I try. But I still think what you're doing is wrong. Not only are you hurting other people, you're disregarding your own well-being. I chose this life of my own accord, and I take pride in what I do. If I get hurt in the process, that's just part of the deal. And if I'm caught and the townspeople hurl stones and fruit as I march to my execution, I'll still die with a smile on my face because... Okay, enough! This is the reason why I can't keep letting you do this! Uh, uh. You want to protect the people important to you, right? Well, I want to make sure you don't end up dead and covered in rotting fruit! So if you still insist on being a reckless fool, I'm going to protect you anyway. Even though it means siding with a filthy villain? I'm not about to help you commit crimes. And if it looks like you're going to hurt someone, I'll do everything in my power to stop you. I just... I just want to save my friend, okay? I truly don't get you sometimes. Also, can't believe I'm going to fall for a cornball line like that. Did you say something, Yuri? Nothing. Forget it. You have something to say, or do you just like staring at me? Merely thinking about your brother, that's all. I only caught a glimpse of him at Aryan Road, but he was nothing like what the rumors suggested. You mean the ones about the eldest son of a noble family falling from grace, taking up a life of banditry and wanton destruction? The very same. They say he was a foul knave who stole not to survive, but because he took such great pleasure from the act. 
Still, I suppose one shouldn't take such rumors at face value. Actually, there's a fair amount of truth to what they say. At least there was, up until two years ago. Yet still, His Majesty thought it was wise to recruit him to our side, and somehow managed to do just that. Yes, I hear he wooed your brother with the chance to demonstrate how the Crestless can still make something of themselves. His honeyed words drew him in, at which point he began to play the man's inferiority complex like a mandolin. Seems like you're more cunning than I realized. You really have eyes and ears everywhere, huh? You're one to talk of cunning, springing as you do from the loins of Margrave Gautier himself. I know you've been keeping tabs on my every move. What? In my line of work, one learns to pick up on hostile presences rather quickly. From the day we met, you've been waiting for me to take one wrong step so you can cut me down. I'd heard the heir of House Gautier was nothing more than a base philanderer, but it seems that rumor isn't completely true either. Just look at you. Having the gall to call me out while you hide behind the murderous grin plastered on your face. I know you've killed without hesitation. <laughs> hey, we've all made mistakes. There's no need to rehash the past. And what's this murderous grin you're talking about? What would that even look like? The fact you are conscious of it makes you all the more dangerous. Unless that pained grimace just now was also part of your act. Regardless, that crest-bearing fool nickname you picked up seems woefully inappropriate for one of your caliber. It's clear you inherited your father's cunning, and then some. I'm not sure whether to take that as a compliment or just start sobbing. The former. There aren't many in Fodling capable of winning my true respect. For my part, I'll watch where I step. Lest I end up with one of your blades lodged in my back. Alright, that should do it. Sorry for pulling you into this, Sylvain. Hey, I'm the one who should be apologizing. I can't believe I didn't pick up on the fact we had spies in our midst. Oh, I'm just especially attuned to sensing such people, what with my line of work and all. They seemed quite adept, save for the fact they were just as poor at hiding their hostility as you. Or maybe you're just way too perceptive. Merely years of practice, I assure you. Still, I was surprised to see how eagerly you set about clearing those spies from our midst. Never thought I'd meet someone who'd jump at an invitation to purge spies as readily as he would a lunch date with a pretty woman. Well, time is of the essence with this kind of stuff, and Dimitri surely won't mind that we only let him know after the fact. We have to win this war, and nothing loses a war faster than a leaky ship. Yet even superior intelligence can be overturned by brute force. Take Aryan Road, for example. I was so certain we had achieved total victory, and then... Yeah, that was a hard-won battle. We'd never have made it without my brother and the Knights. Speaking of which, it's still a little weird to trust my back to a guy who was so recently trying to jam a sword into it. I understand your qualm. In fact, I'm surprised you never hunted me down yourself to seek revenge for your brother's death. It's all water under the bridge if you joining helps us win this war. I just didn't know if I could trust you at first. And now? Have I proven worthy of that trust? Certainly. Your perceptiveness really saved our tales this time. But don't forget that I'm sworn to protect this place. And you know exactly what'll happen if you decide to switch sides. You're actually quite the loyalist beneath all that flippancy. I admire such sensibility, believe it or not. But you may rest easy. I have no intentions of betraying you. In fact, I look forward to a lasting friendship with the future Margrave. 
I'd like that. And I kind of appreciate how you see right through me. Saves me the trouble of trying to beat around the bush, you know? <laughs> it sounds as if we forged a mutual respect. Perhaps I might even agree to go out with you sometime. So long as you don't use any more of your awful pickup lines from the first time we met. Oh, how did that one go again? Ah, yes. Hello there, my adorable little chickadee. Get to let this rooster into the hen house? Look, I already apologized for mistaking you for a girl, so you can quit bringing it up now. And give up such an embarrassing tidbit on the next Margrave Gautier? Never! Besides, I never asked you to apologize. You are not the first to make that error, nor will you be the last. And frankly, a date with you would likely prove a very interesting experience. There's no better way to secure one's future than by attaching oneself to a dashing Margrave to be, after all. Whoa, you just put my chickadee line to shame. Is it weird that I'm kind of into it? Take note, Sylvain. This is how it's done. I think I'm at least starting to get how you've risen so far so fast. <laughs> I'm definitely glad you're on our side. Anyway, here's to seeing where the future takes us. I'm so sorry I can't let you run free. We'll go for another walk together soon, all right? <gasps> Why so guarded, Marianne? Is that how you always greet beautiful men? Yuri, what do you want? Oh, nothing in particular. I simply spotted you on the way back from drills and felt like coming over to see what you were doing. I feel like you never leave these stables. Did you ever grow tired of it? I'm sorry. It's merely a question. I'm not trying to judge you or anything. Well, this is going poorly already. All I wanted was to make a little small talk and it ended up like... this. Are you always this gloomy? It seems you speak just fine around everyone else. I only know how to make small talk about animals, and you seem to hate them. So, um, I figured that no matter what I talked about, you would hate it, and... me. Hold on. Why would I hate you? And when have I ever said I hate animals? Once when I was replacing the horse's hay, I saw you glaring at me from a distance. But if you don't hate animals, then it must be me. I'm sorry, I don't mean to sour your mood further. I'll be gone soon anyway. Uh, uh, um, look, Marianne. Allow me to clear everything up for you. Firstly, I don't despise animals. I actually like them. Understand? Yes, I'm sorry. Don't apologize, or I'll have to repeat myself forever. Just listen. Second, I don't hate you, or even think poorly of you. Although I'll admit that I was somewhat annoyed with you earlier in this conversation. So... Um... Then... Why were you glaring at me before? I'm not sure. Perhaps you saw it wrong? I don't know when this was, but... Wait. <laughs> I think I see now. I have a... condition of sorts. One that can get aggravated under certain circumstances. I knew it. My very presence had aggravated you. I'm telling you, that's not it! I swear by the goddess herself that it's not your fault. Okay? No, you don't know what I have. Excuse me. 
Well, that got us absolutely nowhere. <sighs> Conversing with the shady lady is almost pleasant in comparison. Hmm. What did she mean when she said she'd be gone soon? That's a little too ominous to ignore. <sighs> there you are, Marianne. I've been searching the entire base for you. Yuri, is something wrong? This is what's wrong. Where do you think you're going at this hour? You know, I've been worried this whole time that you might actually leave like you said you would. Oh no, I'm just walking my horse. I have him tied to the tree over there. I just can't believe you'd ever think of... Wait, what? You're walking a horse? We got a late start, but I always take him out on certain days. Right then, it seems I worried for nothing. I'm sorry, it's all my fault. There's no need to apologize. I'm just glad my worries turned out to be unfounded. But... Why are you so worried about me? Actually? Let me ask you a question. Could you turn a blind eye to a friend who says she'll be gone soon? And then can't be found anywhere? The fact is... I have no worth to anyone here. So... Okay, knock that off. You've got plenty of worth. For one, there are things you can do that even I can't. In fact, this seems like a perfect chance to show you exactly why I was glaring at you that one day. Yuri, is something wrong with Dorte? So, your name's Dorte, hmm? That's a lovely coat you have there. I see someone has groomed you too. Uh, uh, <gasps> Are you all right? Um, are you better now? What happened? Isn't it obvious? That sort of thing always happens whenever I get too close to horses or cats. And when the sneeze approaches, my eyes narrow reflexively. That's probably why it looked like I was glaring at you. Luckily, it's mostly just sniffles, so I don't go out of my way to tell people about it. Still, I probably should have told you from the start. Apologies for giving you the wrong idea, Marianne. No, it's alright. It's really my fault for jumping to conclusions. And I'm sorry you had to pet my horse. The next time you say sorry, I'm going to glare at you for it. For it. For it. Oh, um, would you mind if I tried some detoxifying magic on you? I'm not certain it will have any effect, but it may temporarily alleviate your symptoms at least. Detoxifying, hmm? You know, if this works, it may help one of my lifelong dreams come true. What? Most certainly. Oh, I'd love to go on a long trail ride, or put a room full of friendly cats all afternoon. Uh... <laughs> I'm sorry, Yuri. I'm just so surprised. Those are truly wonderful dreams to have. And I would love to help you achieve them if I can. I'd be glad to take you up on that offer. Do you see now why I said you aren't worthless? Now let's do this, Marianne. Hit me with the most powerful magic you've got. Oh, I've really done it this time. 
Well, if it isn't Borthus. What's wrong? That was a legendary sigh. Yuri, pal! Hear me out for a sec, will ya? They were these mercs, and I may have made a bet with them. Yeah, yeah, you lost, I get it. But we've got bigger issues to discuss. Must be a pretty big deal if it's more important than me losing my dinner to those mercs. It's come to my attention that one of my business associates is looking for a certain giant broke fool. What? That's it? I'll just break him in half, and then we can move on with our lives. Not a problem. I figured you'd say that, which is exactly why I came to tell you not to. See, this particular associate hires out quite a few of my people. I can't have a bruiser like you turning them into corpses. Can't I just rough them up enough to get them off my back? A few broken bones never killed anyone. Come now. You know there's no way I'd let you get away with that. I'd use every last one of my contacts to make sure you never win another bet for the rest of your life. Whoa, cut a guy a break, would ya? I wouldn't put it past you to actually follow through. I take it we've reached an understanding, then. I suggest you lay low until things blow over. Clear? Even after all this time, her ability to enrage people still manages to astound me. Hey, it's not as bad as it used to be. The price on my head's never been lower. On the flip side, the price for my skills has only gone up. I've been making money hand over fist as a mercenary. But the stakes keep getting higher and higher, so my pockets remain as empty as ever. I can't help but sigh in disappointment listening to you talk. You're seriously lucky I'm not happy, or you'd be neck deep in monsters. <laughs> All right, I hear you. But enough about me. What have you been getting up to since you left Abyss? Oh, I just went back to my old gang. They were my home before the Officers Academy, after all. But I still had to take on some mercenary work to keep my people fed and things running smoothly. It's been a rough couple of years, and thanks to that, my once stunning physique has been spoiled by all this muscle. <laughs> really? You still look pretty scrawny to me. Your skill with the blades improved, though, that's for sure. Well, when you're forced to fight, you either improve or you die. Still, I've got nothing on you. You practically live for a good brawl, after all. These fists have never let me down. No matter the enemy, I'm always the one who walks away. Say, Yuri, I just had a brilliant idea. I have a feeling I'm going to regret asking. But sure, let's hear it. If this associate of yours doesn't catch me, you and your underlings are gonna have to take responsibility, right? Most likely. I knew what I was getting into when I told you to back down. I've made my peace. Yeah? Well, I'm not about to leave my buddy Yuri holding the bag while I sit on my hands. Balthus? So, to make things fair, let's have ourselves a little wager to decide which of us is gonna take the fall. That way, if you lose fair and square, it'll give you an out, yeah? You'll have no other choice but to take your goons back from that client, and they won't get pummeled by yours truly. Problem solved! Hypothetically, if I were to take this bet, what happens if you lose? I'll do what I always do. Take my shirt off, jump out in front of them, and run away as they look on in awe. This is what I get for trying to help. You love taking off your clothes almost as much as you do gambling. No wonder your pockets are always empty.
Yuri, may I have a word with you? Sedef, did you need something? If you want to talk business, we can go somewhere more private. No, it is nothing of the sort. I happened to see you speaking with a scholar earlier. I'm curious as to the nature of your conversation. You seem quite absorbed. Oh, so you saw that, did you? Well, I suppose you would be familiar with the topic. I was trying to learn a little about the legend of the Ten Elites. That is rather diligent of you. I'm impressed. Nothing diligent about it. I just didn't quite receive the same education as my noble peers. It's said that the goddess granted the Ten Elites power in the form of crests, allowing them to defeat the evil that threatened Fodlin. That power freed them from the ravages of age, and even saved them from the brink of death. So the legend goes. It is also said that some crest bearers live much longer than those without. There is even a theory which posits that Nemesis, the King of Liberation, lived for several centuries. Is that so? I do wonder, however, why such a subject would interest you. Hmm. Well, I suppose I can trust you. The truth is, I wanted to figure out who exactly I am. Given your position, I'm sure you know of the crest I bear. Indeed, I do. I must admit, its discovery upon your enrollment at the Officer's Academy came as quite a surprise. After all, you bear the crest of Oban, which was thought to have been lost long ago. An exceedingly rare crest, yet I have no idea where it came from. My mother's status being what it is, I don't have the slightest clue who my father is or where he was from. I'd never once doubted that I was my mother's son, but then I found out about my crest. It's made me question everything I've ever known about myself. I see. So you yourself do not know the origin of your crest. But then I'd heard the Ten Elites weren't born with their crests. So I figured that would be a good place to start digging. No matter the nature of your crest, I am certain it was bestowed upon you by the will of the Goddess. Do not resent the power that dwells within your blood. Cherish it, and you shall find your way. <laughs> you sound just like the scriptures, but I appreciate the encouragement. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some business to attend to. I thought that was it for me. I can't believe I fell for that trap behind enemy lines. It was certainly an uncharacteristic blunder. However, you have returned safely, with your life intact. <laughs> I can hardly believe it. Part of me keeps wondering if I'm really still alive. I've had my share of brushes with death, but that was definitely the second worst. Oh? What was the first? An illness swept through my village when I was really young. We didn't have access to a doctor, or the money to pay one. Ah, the plague that ravaged Fargus. At the time, the entire kingdom was struggling mightily to contain it, or so I have heard. Its foul clutches claimed even the queen of Fargus herself. It is incredible that you survived without the aid of a physician. You're telling me? Honestly, if that old man hadn't saved me, I wouldn't be standing here now. This old man you speak of, was he a doctor? No, at least I don't think he was. Just some feeble old stranger my mother came across. He could barely even walk on his own. So we took him in, 
and made sure he was cared for. Then I caught the plague. And of course, there was nothing my mother could do about that. That's when the old man saved me. I have no idea what kind of treatment or medicine he used to do it. Is that so? And where is this elderly gentleman now? Oh, he passed away a long time ago. I told you. This was back when I was a kid. I see. Then it is as I thought. Your story reminded me of something, actually. One of the ten elites was originally afflicted with a terminal disease. After receiving their crest, this individual made a full recovery. Or so the story goes. Perhaps it is more fitting to call it a fairy tale. I'm not sure I completely follow. Are you saying that old man saved my life by giving me the power of a crest? I am simply saying the possibility exists. Alas, I cannot know for certain. Hold up. It does actually kind of make sense when I think about it. But if that's true, it would mean that old man was an apostle of the goddess or something. <laughs> Which means I might live to be ridiculously old, just like the ten elites, right? Regrettably, that elderly gentleman has left this world, so none can confirm nor deny that. However, what is certain is that he saved your life. You should treat it with care, whether on the battlefield or elsewhere. After all, we have but one life to live. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Thanks for the advice. I still have plenty of things I have to do before my time is up. You would do well to head back and get some rest. My apologies for keeping you. You always cursed the blood that flowed through you. But in the end, it saved that child's life. It brings me great relief to know that you found salvation in your last moments. Oban, my friend. Be at peace. Yuri's still not back yet? It's been five days. Hmm? What's this? A letter? Not liking to leave his stuff lying around. I wonder if it says anything about where he went. Oh, it's just sitting there. Can't hurt to take a peek, right? Are you well? Eating enough? I worry about you all the time. Thank you for sending money always. I want to see you soon. Huh. Is this letter for Yuri? It's got a different name on it. Having fun? Yuri! Wow, you really snuck up on me. When did you get back? Just now. More importantly, why are you snooping through things that don't belong to you? Choose your next word carefully if you don't want them to be your last. I'm sorry. It was just sitting out in the open, so I thought it'd be okay if I read it. I was worried you weren't coming back. Oh, never mind. I can't imagine you'd have a reason to pry into my affairs. I suppose this is what I get for taking off without telling anyone. And for being so careless. Yeah, I thought you'd be the last person to leave something like this behind. You must have left in a hurry. You could say that. I see. Well, it must have been important. But I know it's none of my business. I appreciate your concern, but I don't mind. The letter is from my mother. She's always been prone to illness, but lately her condition has grown worse. 
and I try to visit whenever she asks to see me. Obviously, there are times when I can't go, but... I have to take all the time I can get, right? I never know which visit will be my final chance to see her. I understand. Once someone's gone, they're gone. But wait, the name on that letter... Is that your real name? So Yuri's an alias and you're really red? No need to say it. And yes, what parent would call their kid by an alias anyway? Fair point. It's a nice name, though. Why hide it? In my line of work, it pays to have more than a few names. And don't go telling anyone about this. You won't like to find out what happens if you do. I won't. Promise. And if I do slip up, you're free to do your worst. In any case, I am sorry for prying. And for what it's worth, I hope your mom gets better soon. If it were easy to cure, then we wouldn't even be talking about it. But I appreciate the sentiment nonetheless. Oh, Yuri, you're back? I thought you'd still be away. Well, look who it is. I figured if I didn't come back before sunset, someone might get worried and ransack my room again. I wasn't ransacking. You're gonna keep holding that over my head, aren't you? Just joking, friend. No need to take everything so seriously. Anyway, it's late. Shouldn't you be getting some shut-eye? Probably, but I just got my second wind. How was your mom, by the way? Ah, well, it's not looking good, that's for sure. But she's still got some fight in her yet. I'd planned on staying longer, but she told me to do what I had to do and sent me on my way. One minute she wants to see me, the next she's telling me to go home. <laughs> Honestly, she's all over the place. Reminds me of my mom. The one who raised me, anyway. She passed away, didn't she? Judging by your expression, she must have been pretty special. She was. More than I can say. She took me in when I'd been abandoned. Taught me how to live. We weren't blood-related, but she was my mom. No doubt about it. I'm sure wherever she is now, she's very happy to hear you say that. Oh, that reminds me. I wanted to ask you something. It's been on my mind for a while now. About your real name. Your mom gave it to you, right? Where does it come from? I've never heard anything like it before. Look up. No, a little more to the left. See that bright star over there? Bright star... to the left? Which one? There are thousands of stars up there, and they're all bright. Well, I guess it doesn't matter if you find it or not. Anyway, it's that star's ancient name. The white star that the goddess herself made into a disciple. My mother is a devout follower of Seros. But I know it's a pretty ostentatious name for a penniless kid. I don't think so. It just shows how much you mean to her. Yeah. Well, I do like it. She gave it to me after all. I'm not sure how much of the scriptures she really understands. But knowing her, I'm certain she put a lot of consideration into my name. Then doesn't it seem like kind of a waste not to use it? What with how much thought she put into it? I've used many names, and each one comes with its own mask. But when I hear my real name, all those facades fall away. The only people who can call me that are those who are truly special to me. Immediate family. 
or someone just as important. Which means that if you're so intent on using my name, you'd better be willing to spend the rest of your life by my side. The rest of my life, huh? Okay, I'll think about it. <laughs> the look on your face right now, it's priceless. Regardless, it does make me happy to hear that you like my name. And if you ever decide you're up for it, let me know, okay? <laughs> I'll think it over too, just in case. <laughs>